Um, I'm happy to be here to talk to you all today. I'm sorry that I'm not there in person. I'd much rather be there than in Texas. Um, and, and in preparing this talk, it occurred to me that I, I don't think I have given a talk at a CFHG users meeting in the past. I've had conflict. So anyway, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to talk to you briefly about the MSC project today. Uh, I decided to just, um, I know probably many of you are aware of, of uh, uh, the project, the MSC project and its status, uh, but maybe not all of you are. And I, so I decided to get use the same slides that I generally give in my, my talks about MSC, um, but I'll say different things to this audience than I normally would say to, to a group of scientists that are uninitiated in the ways of MSC. Uh, anyway, so I'm the I'm the project scientist for MSC, um, and I am joined in the science leadership team by uh, the deputy project scientist Andrea Petrick. Um, many of you know her well, I'm sure. Um, she has remained with the MSC project even after she transitioned to her new position at Space Telescope. So we're great, glad to have to be able to keep her. Uh, and then about a year ago, we had a new um, uh, scientist join the the project. Jen Sobeck, and she replaced Nicola Flage as the MSC system scientist. So we've been lucky to be able to work with her. Um, she has done a lot of excellent work that has been very complementary to the kinds of things that Nicola did uh, when he was in that role. So it's been great. Um, you can see across the bottom, all of the partners in the MSC project. Um, I won't read them for you, but we'd be happy to review those if anyone is curious who they are, if you don't know. Uh, okay. So I like to start a uh, talk about MSC um, highlighting the excellence of the CFHT project. So let me just start by saying to this audience, thank you all very much for continuing that excellence and, and, uh, um, and your work on, with CFHT uh, in the past. Um, we have, a, MSC has a strong foundation to build on, uh, both in terms of uh, science, um, thanks to all of you, and also uh, outreach leadership on my Mauna Kea, thanks to Mary Beth and, and many others, including many of you. Um, so thank you for all of that. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to help this project move forward um, from both fronts. Um, speaking of strong foundations, the CFHT physical uh, facility also has a strong foundation, and so we intend to retain that. Um, and so you can see here that uh, when we build the MSE facility, we're going to retain the, the, the um, first few floors and the pier of the building will replace the telescope, of course, and the dome with a slightly larger dome. But in the end, um, the facility will look uh, quite similar to, to how it looks today. Um, and that's, there are many reasons for that, um, some of which are obvious. Um, so to, I decided today to just talk about the conceptual design of MSC that was put together uh, in 2018, it was reviewed in 2018, it's put together a few years before that, just before I joined the project. Um, and then the next talk, Sam is going to tell you about all the exciting new ideas that we've had over the last couple of years uh, advancing this design uh, beyond what I'm showing on this slide. Uh, but this is a good starting point to, to talk about. So MSC uh, will, the conceptual design, uh, it uses an 11.25 meter diameter telescope, which again, um, can surprisingly fit inside almost the same size dome, a slightly larger dome. You can see the um, segmented mirror design uh, here in, inside of this dome with the mirror segments being uh, the same technology as either the TMT or the ELT uh, segments so that so we can save on that development cost. Um, that primary mirror feeds a uh, fiber positioner robot at the top end of the telescope at the prime focus that has 4,332 fibers over a 1.5 square degree field of view. Um, three quarters of the fibers uh, carry light to the low, what we call the low to the moderate resolution spectrographs. Um, in, in the conceptual design, again, they had resolutions of either 3,000 or 6,000. Uh, they, operate, they operate over the ultraviolet to all the way into the H band. Um, so a very wide uh, wavelength range. And again, um, just over 3,000 fibers, uh, three quarters of the fibers uh, go to those spectrographs. The remainder of the spectra of the fibers carry light into the high resolution spectrographs. So one quarter of the fibers go to uh, spectrographs that operate at a resolution of 30,000, um, not over the entire optical window, only in three narrow wavelength windows in that, that range in the blue, green, and the red. Um, and again, 1,000 fibers, one quarter of the fibers um, go 
feed like carry light to the high resolution spectrographs. Okay, what I like to say here, uh, and maybe this is more contentious of a subject on, to this audience than it is to the people, I, the scientists I usually give this talk to, is that what you do not see here is anything else. Um, so MSE, when uh, we are fully commissioned, we'll, we'll have no other instruments on it in this conceptual design plan. It's a completely dedicated facility and it's dedicated to spectroscopic surveys. Um, and that's all we'll do all the time. Um, and that's uh, one of, and from my perspective, uh, that's one of the key strengths of the MSC project, especially when compared to other facilities, similar facilities like Subaru's PFS or um, BLT Moon's, um, those kinds of things. So um, it's a, it is a great strength of, of the MSC conceptual design. Um, okay, so moving on to uh, talking about, I'm not gonna talk a lot about the instrumentation because, um, as, as I said, and as you'll see in the next talk, that we're in the throes of uh, advancing the instrumentation for the facility. So I decided to talk more about the science for MSC, which will uh, only won't change much um, in terms of as a result of the changing plans for instrumentation, but it will only get better and faster. Um, so that's good. Um, so our science team, we have a science team of over 400 scientists uh, all around the world um, that has continued to grow uh, significantly year by year. Um, there's a lot of interest in the MSC project and it's been, for me, it's been really fun to, to be in this position to, to see all of that and to engage with all of that enthusiasm. Anyway, our, our science team is divided into eight science working groups that you can see here. Um, and each, each working group is uh, led by two co-leads. Their names are, are given on the slide. And um, perhaps not surprisingly, for a uh, next generation project like MSE, um, we span the entire range of the uh, universe that you would want to be able to observe in the optical and near infrared. Um, so everything from uh, studies of nearby exoplanets and, and stars, detailed studies of chemical nucleosynthesis, um, stellar chemical abundances, um, uh, studies of chemodynamics in the, in the Milky Way and uh, resolved stellar populations in and around the Milky Way. Um, to in the nearby universe, and then uh, spanning the nearby and distant universe, galaxy formation and evolution. I'll show on the next slide uh, uh, that uh, we uh, plan to study galaxies over in the near at low and and low redshift and into the cosmic noon. Um, we have a working group studying AGN and supermassive black holes, making great plans for advancing science in that field. Um, one of the newest and I quite interesting um, science uh, goals uh, and science working groups in MSC is this astrophysical tests of dark matter. The idea here being to study stars that are embedded in dark matter dominated uh, stellar associations and then be able to um, uh, understand more about the dark matter properties of those of uh, the universe. Um, we have a very compelling cosmology case um, that is, uh, can only be accomplished with a facility like MSC. And then finally, we have a, a time domain in astronomy and transient group, science working group that um, has been very active in the past and will be even more engaged now that um, Rubin Observatory planning and, and operations is, is ramping up um, we're, and, and, and as a result of the decadal survey results, as I'll, I'll mention in a minute. Okay, um, so normally when I give an hour long talk, I spend uh, a lot of time talking about each one of these, uh, each one of my favorite science cases to talk about, but I fear I've crammed them all onto one slide and um, I'd be happy to answer questions if there are any specific questions about this, but I don't have a lot of time to go into detail. Um, so in my one representative uh, compilation science slide here, um, I put together just a couple of, I think, the, the most compelling science cases, starting with, in the top left, uh, my favorite science case for MSC and the one that, that really got me uh, engaged and excited about the project from the beginning. And that is the abil its ability to be able to study large samples of stars at a high spectral resolution to measure chemical abundance of many, many stars. Um, and the figure that I've shown here, um, the astronomer's version of the periodic table, is highlighting the, I'm, um, I'm interested in the orange colored stars uh, that are the so-called R process, rapid neutron capture process elements. Um, we have 
been able to, thanks to uh, the one very good LIGO event, be able to watch neutron stars merge in real times and form our process elements. We really don't have enough data in observational data of the stars in the universe, old stars in the universe to understand uh, statistically how neutron uh, rapid neutron capture elements are produced. And it's only with a big survey facility like MSE that is operating at very high spectral resolution. Um, it's a unique capability for MSE that will be able to, to statistically study these kinds of events. So I, that's one thing that I'm really excited about. Um, if you look at the figure in the top middle, um, similarly, uh, it's the statistics of MSE's um, survey uh, capabilities that enable um, uh, this science case in which uh, we're looking at white dwarf stars that have had a planet accrete onto the surface of the white dwarf star. Um, and we can take spectra of those white dwarfs and, and um, kind of in a, in a unique sort of way, um, understand the, chemo the, the detailed composition of the exoplanet, not just the exoplanet atmosphere that we can see in an existing exoplanet, but the whole thing, because it's been destroyed as it was accreted onto the surface of a, of a white dwarf. So that's cool. And again, you can only do that with a project that has lots of fibers and lots of uh, survey capability. On the top right, um, this is a representative example of the uh, astrophysical tests of dark matter group um, with MSE. So in, in this figure, the points are, are representing, by the red points are, are representing the number of stars in ultrafine dwarf galaxies in the nearby universe in orbit around the Milky Way and in 31 um, that have been studied chemodynamically, or sorry, just dynamically, kin kinematically to date. Um, and with MSC, we'll be able to uh, observe samples more like the black points. So as you can see, orders of magnitude, two or three orders of magnitude in these, in these galaxies. Uh, more stars, and that will just um, really nail down our ability to uh, understand the properties of dark matter. With LSSC, with Rubin Observatory, we'll be able to um, increase this further, um, these numbers further, but only by about a factor of two. So it's really the gain, MSC is the gain that we need to uh, increase by orders of magnitude in terms of the numbers of stars. On the bottom left, um, I don't expect you to be able to read that uh, <laughs> figure at all, um, but this is a figure taken from our uh, Galaxy formation evolution chapter in the science working, uh, sorry, in the in the detailed science case document, um, and highlighting just the the range and the ability capability of the um, planned surveys for um, the science case. So you can see the, the green uh, points that have, say MMC next to them are the are the nearby um, low redshift survey and then high redshift surveys. And with these, we'll have hundreds of thousands of galaxies um, be, being able to answer all kinds of questions about both uh, Redshift 0 0.2 and Cosmic Noon um, science. Um, in the bottom middle, um, we are showing a, a figure for, about the um, quasar absorption spectroscopy study. So this, the idea here is um, very similar to what the Sloan Digital Sky Survey did about 20 years ago in their key project using quasars as uh, pencil beam illuminations of the uh, in intervening interstellar medium. But with MSD, we'll have so many more sight lines and we'll be able to reach this to much fainter orders of magnitude, fainter, or sorry, magnet, not orders of magnitude, magnitudes fainter um, quasars. Um, and so we'll be able to do uh, much more detailed studies of the uh, detailed chemical composition of the universe. And then finally, on the bottom right um, is a figure taken from our cosmology science case. They've really focused in on um, large surveys that will able to be able to answer these two key questions. One on the left is the um, mass of the neutrino. Uh, so these measurements that made with MSC, when combined with other facilities, will be able to, for the first time, not only measure the combined mass of the neutrino, but will probably even be able to measure the uh, whether or not the uh, the uh, Hierarch mass hierarchy is inverted, and that's key. Maybe that's not something that will be able to be done without a project like MSC. On the right uh, is another key uh, cosmological parameter uh, called FNL, which is measuring the nonlinear bias of uh, galaxies at, at um, uh, high redshift. Um, so again, another key cosmological constraint. So we have a lot of science. This is only a very uh, tip of the iceberg look at what we'll do with MSE. Uh, but it gives you kind of a flavor of what we're planning. Um, 
I also always like to show this nice slide that uh, Alan McConaughey put together uh, for our project science book. Oh, I forgot to, you got, you've seen it, but at the bottom of the last slide, I, I put a link to the archive version of the project science, of the detailed science case. So I encourage you to take a look at that. It's a, it's a very nice document that Alan put together. And he put together this, this uh, image that is highlighting the synergies between MSD and other facilities. And that's really an important thing um, to, to think about and talk about uh, going forward is how we fit into the landscape. And we're, we're really, MSC is really, you can think of a, uh, as a, um, a great nexus of um, uh, science, but tying together different facilities like the one way that I'd like to think about it is using MSC to uh, spectroscopically follow up uh, observations or the objects that are that are discovered in Rubin by Rubin Observatory, and then vetting those for uh, uh, observ more detailed observations with 30 meter class telescopes like PLT, TMT, TMT. Um, so it, it, it's key for for that kind of science, but also um, synergies between MSE and facilities that operate at other wavelengths are key, and you can see some of those here, um, and then. Uh, Similarly, uh, observations between ground-based and space-based facilities. So MSC is really a cornerstone for the, uh, could, when, when we get built, we will be a cornerstone of um, uh, interactions between all of these different kinds of, of science questions that can be answered. I just wanted to, I'm almost out of time, but I just wanted to uh, say a few words about what we've been, spent a lot of time doing over the last couple of years, and that is um, ensuring that MSC was um, considered and uh, represented well in programmatic reviews um, that have happened over the past few years. So I probably don't have to tell this audience much about what's on this slide. Um, so the first of these reviews was the French Prospective. Um, so may maybe I'll just say thank you to all of you who helped uh, talk about MSE through that process. In particular, because I don't speak French, so I couldn't I couldn't help much, but uh, I did what I could. Uh, thank you to all of you. And we were happy to see that um, in the that report that uh, there was continued support for CFHD and, and eventually for potentially MSC. Um, at around that same time, there was an Australian midterm review that was not quite as positive, to be honest about it. Um, the Australians at, at the time were, were very much focused on their engagement in ESO. And so if, if they are to continue to support uh, MSE, it would need to be folded into an ESO kind of program, um, which maybe is something that could be done in the future. I don't know. Um, it's unfortunate because we have a lot of really great scientists in Australia that are had been enthusiastic about MSE. In uh, better news, the Canadian Long Range Plan uh, viewed MSE very favorably. Um, we were the ranked third priority, um, and uh, we were recommended for funding at a specific level, so that's that's really good um, from a Canadian perspective in MSC going forward. Um, so, but that's all old news. That's all from last, from more than a year ago. Um, more recently, so last November, at long last, the Astro 2020 Decadal Survey came out, uh, and I was very pleased. I'm pleased to report that MSC fared very well. There was a lot. There, it was mentioned by name several times, um, and um, as a result, we have. We are making plans, Andy mentioned this on Monday, um, to put in funding proposals for support for both MSE and this new Pathfinder concept that has really been developed over the last few months. And, and we have Andy, uh, I want to give Andy a lot of thanks for his efforts leading that, uh, because I think that's really a, a great potential for the future of MSC, um, or transition towards MSE. And, also in the last year, several years, um, we've been doing a similar exercise in the US particle community. Um, so that it is called the snow mass process. And we have um, uh, engaged with that process as well. That's wrapping up right now. And then the next phase of that um, review, uh, we'll, we'll go on and make recommendations for what will happen in particle physics for the next few years. Um, particle physicists seem particularly interested in MSE, especially if we can transition to what Sam's going to talk about next. So uh, I'm running, I am out of time. So let me um, just invite you, if, if you, by strange chance, you are not yet on the science team and you would like to be, we would love to have you. Um, you can just send me an email or send an email to MSE info and we'll um, get you set up and you can get new monthly newsletters 
about the project. And if there's time for one quick question, I will leave up our acknowledgement slide and I will encourage you to take a look at our website at, listed at the very bottom here um, for uh, reference to, to statements of MSC's mission statement and uh, cultural respect statement and EDI statement. I'll stop there. <laughs>